So, today we want again gonna go through some Reddit things. I don't know what it's gonna be about, but I think it is gonna be about something worth talking about. The first one is by the Stoicism subreddit. I feel as if this quote is unintentionally very stoic. Uh, this is a quote by Billy Connolly. I hate all those weathermen who tell you that rain is bad weather. There is no such thing as bad weather, just the wrong clothing, so get yourself a sexy raincoat and live a little. Yeah, I don't think that it is very stoic though, um, but I think it is just the truth. Yeah, I mean, there is no bad weather. You can still go outside even though it's raining, as it is the case for me today. Today is not that good of a weather, quote unquote. But, by the way, and it might be also raining right now. I'm actually not sure, but let's get some light in. Let's see. The concept of luck in Western culture and our toxic attitudes towards it. Let's see, Western culture, particularly in the Anglo-Saxon world, is the only one where luck seems to be uh, relegated as a cop-out or an excuse, something to feel guilt and ashamed of. In non-Western cultures, particularly in the Far East, you can see that the concept of luck is uh, and good fortune is very prominent. Even everyday conversations revolve around luck and good fortune. There is never any shame when one suffers a misfortune to say, I guess I am out of luck. Even superstars that we worship in Western society, like Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, people whom we attribute to their intelligence and work ethic, had loads of luck. Steve Jobs may seem like a very unique individual, and he is, but for every guy like Steve Jobs, there were hundreds, possibly thousands, who were doing similar things at around the same time. You don't know them, and they shall remain nameless. But who are we to say that they need that they didn't succeed because they didn't work as hard. There are a hundred reasons why someone who worked just as hard as Steve Jobs and was just as smart failed. Life happens. Same with the concept of luck in our relation. Same with the concept of luck in our relationships. There are people who met their love of their life in high school and stayed together ever since. Does that make them better people than, say, someone who struggled to find a partner throughout his or her 20s and or 30s and then finally found someone but then ended up divorcing? We all know in our personal lives wonderful people who ended up divorcing and struggling to find a partner. We also know pretty shitty people who, for whatever reason, is with the same person their entire life. Why? Again, there are hundreds of reasons, but life happens. Life happens, that's the key here, and I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't apply it to my own life. I've been very fortunate in my education and career for my life so far. It's become so apparent now since due to the pandemic. Lots of people are struggling right now. I don't think I'm better than these people. I worked hard, sure, but so did that small business owner who is forced to close shop. Am I smarter than him? Probably in some things, but dumber in so many others. That means I can also give myself a break in areas of my life where I haven't had a lot of success, like my love life, for example. I'm not a shitty, unlovable person because I don't have a significant other. There are a hundred reasons why, again, life happens. The self-help industry is a billion-dollar industry designed to make people feel shit for not being good enough. You don't have that great career or that hot girlfriend slash boyfriend because you didn't work hard enough. The people who do have what you have, uh, what you want, well, they all worked hard for it, and you didn't. I do just understand where he's going for, or or what he or she is going for. Um, yeah, I mean, luck really plays a pretty fucking big as role. But I think it is about mitigating the amount of luck or the the amount of uh, change luck can make. You know, if you just don't work hard enough, then okay, you need way more luck. But if you work way harder, then you need not that much luck. If you know what I mean. If this actually makes sense, I don't know. But I think luck really does play a role. Like, it is not something that... Um, whatever luck actually is. I don't know the definition of luck. But um, but yeah, I think it is, uh, it is important. But let's see what other people are saying. I think this is a very well-formulated idea. And I would say so as well. It is very well written and very well um, uh, articulated. At least from my personal experiences, there have been times where I have formed untrue and incorrect assumptions based on purely unlucky occurrences. I have formed negative confirmation biases based on unlucky events happening more than once. Self-reflection has helped me overcome some of these patterns, although realizing 
how certain events are just outside of our control is super powerful. I found that once I stop being upset about unlucky events, which I have no control over, it improves my ability to formulate better circumstances. Sometimes these lucky events were unlucky events were being created by my own subconscious belief that there was something wrong with me. These beliefs were recreating the unlucky circumstances that originally led me to their beliefs, and so on and so on. Uh, something that I do also want to point out is, if you realize that luck really plays a big role and um, we need to be lucky, life might seem very miserable, miserable, you know, but in fact it is not quite a case because then it is just even more about your head and how you're receiving things and perceiving things and how you think about things and so on and so on and so on. Because if luck plays such a big role, you know, then um, yeah, something good could come, could happen, something bad could happen and so on. But it's just in the end comes up to how you think about it. You know, your life could be completely shit just because, okay, no matter how hard I work, I am never going to succeed because luck plays a role, you know. But if you think about it, like, um, the the way you think about it really matters then, you know, because a negative perspective just uh, changes into a positive one. Like, okay, I can do something or I can have the luck to do that, you know, and okay, today is a good day and so on. Like, yeah, I think you know what I mean. I think you know what I'm referring to and I think you know me pretty well as well. Moving cities, I feel like I have two lives. So I'm from a pretty small town where I've lived my whole life. A while ago, age 22, I decided to move to a huge city in a different country. I lived there for around two years and it was the most amazing time of my life. I experienced so many new things, met so many people and for the first time ever had a decent social life. All my friends at home had drifted apart so prior to moving, I barely did anything except work. Living in the city, in this new city was great except I felt so homesick. I missed my mom, dad, sister and pet dog. After two years I decided to move homeless. The uh, homesickness was becoming unbearable. I was home for two months before I realized how much I hated being back. Being with my family was great but I felt like I had no life. I have no friends in a small town anymore and everything feels so quiet compared to the big city. I missed the city so much I decided... I would, would we, uh, I decided I would move back there again. Then COVID happened and the borders closed and I'm stuck in the small town. This was in March and it's going to be at least six months or more months before I can go back. The problem is that for some reason my mind is struggling so much. I look at photos you see from my time living there and feels like a dream or another life that I imagined. Rationally, I know that six months more isn't long and it's not the waiting that bothers me. The way I feel when I look back at memories of my time there, I just can't explain it. If anyone has been in a similar situation, I'd love to know. I'm just so confused and can't work out my feelings. I feel like when I was there, I was living. Now I'm just existing. I also know when I do move back, my homesickness is going to come back. Ah. This is really affecting me a lot and I struggle every day with what to do. I kind of know the situation in some or the other way. Um, just always searching for like, you know, the grass is always greener. This is it. This is quite it. The grass is always greener. And it is about realizing what you have and um, rationally believing that and or thinking about the fact that what you're having at home or what um, the other situation is, is not what you would like to have at this point in time. Like, um... You know, sometimes I feel like, well, I just don't want to be alone now. I just want to be with somebody and whatnot. But then I think about the fact that there is always upsides and downsides, you know, of whatever the fuck I'm doing. And by thinking about that and, and really internalizing that, you might be able to overcome that. Since, yeah, okay, you are in this big city and you are homesick. But okay, you have been back, which I think is one of the uh, most important experiences there in this whole story, because you now know that being home in this small little town isn't as nice as you thought it would be. And so, yeah, you know, uh, think rationally about everything. I know we are not a rational animal. This is, this is just not who we are. It's not what we are doing. But, um, but yeah. You know, think about the pros and cons and you're, I think, quickly going to be reminded that everything was quite shitty in a small town. And uh, 
something else you can't control it like the borders are closed it is what it is and you can't actually make the best out of the time like uh, the lockdown in my city to to really be honest and i i think i'm using it as an excuse uh is really not bothering me it actually just gives my mind a lot of peace because i don't feel forced on the weekends to do something with somebody because i i often feel that way i often feel a way that i needs to do something and I need to to be with somebody and I need to do anything with whomever and and whatnot well I I I don't have to and and now I do have an excuse of okay you know I just don't have to go outside because I'm not allowed to do so you know at least in theory not 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 really because I I could still but I but I also kind of have the, the excuse of okay you know I'm just gonna be as uh, safe as someone can be and I also want other people to be as safe as they can be because I'm all the time around people that are positive so it's also actually a big uh, a, you know a dangerous thing to be with me and around me because who the fuck knows if I'm having something or not I was tested negative past Friday I guess or something so yeah anyway it is what it is um yeah, again, mind. Your mind plays a pretty big role in whatever the fuck you're doing, whether you're healthy and happy or miserable and unhealthy. How do you forgive? How do you forgive somebody who is not even sorry for exploiting you mentally, emotionally and verbally? Share your thoughts, please. I do believe that not forgiving somebody is just not good for yourself. Like, it's... Uh, it's it's not gonna yeah you're gonna be unhappy that's quite it period and and so therefore doesn't make too much sense to not forgive other people and it is what it is and I think that I mean I I always I always think that people are not doing things on purpose you know if something happens that is negative and whatnot. I always believe that people are not doing this intentionally just because this is my belief. This is how I function. I don't believe that people are bad. I think that there is reasons why people are doing so, you know. And this is also something to focus on. Like, why is this person uh, or why was this person exploiting me, you know, mentally, emotionally and whatnot, verbally. This probably has something to do with the person per se. You know, the person is broken in some way or miserable in some other way because um, he or she needs to do that. So actually feeling, feeling sorry for this person, forgiving this person might just be, you know, a better idea than to, to constantly uh, be angry. And of course, this takes time and I, I don't expect it to just uh, not take any time because um, whatever happened, it might be something pretty severe or it might have been something pretty severe. And so it takes some time and it is what it is. But I don't know, like I wouldn't also be charging myself for not forgiving this person. Like, it is what it is. Like, go on and live your life and, I don't know, forget what happened. Or, well, not actually forget, but uh, don't let it suck up your mind. One small act of kindness will give cause major... Will give... What? Will give cause major positive effects. Okay. The high school kid in a white shirt started a group started a group at his school. At lunch, this group of kids will go to kids who were eating alone and invite them to eat lunch together. Soon, the coolest kids in the school were walking around engaging kids who had a difficult time fitting in. The girl in uh, in the other two pictures is explaining how much it meant to her. The name of the group is We Dine Together and they want to start uh, chapters at other school. Some kids just make me so damn proud. Is it warm in here? I think my eyes are sweating. Uh, I think this is amazing. And I think it just shows, um, I love that white shirt, dude. It's, it's really fucking amazing. Like, um, a lot of people are having it really, 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 uh, bad and, and, and definitely not easy. So, um, so yeah, it is, it is an amazing thing. And, uh, what I want to say is it just shows how much power that we're having and what we all can do. Like, yeah, you know. It's fucking amazing. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's quite it. It is just amazing. It is amazing what you could, could be doing if you wanted to do something. 
But a lot of people seem to be quote unquote deciding, not necessarily, but probably subconsciously, uh, or not consciously, but subconsciously. That, 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 well, yeah, I don't actually know what I want to say, but I'm going to end the episode there. So I wish you the best health of happiness and all success, and also hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered. Basically, means your legacy basically means just being a nice person that being remembered as a nice person is a pretty cool thing. Three other questions that I have you are why are you here? Why are you trying to change? I want to both you to most these three questions. I hope we're going to show you a purpose and maybe even a business idea, which is a pretty cool thing as well. One last idea that I have you is what could you essentially say or do that could impact somebody's life immensely? If this is a word, I don't fucking know. But anyway, gotta end the episode there. So bye bye. Oh, hopefully see you soon.